Hi, everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. You know, over the years, I've run into dozens of divers who claim that their earlier TV programs like Undersea World with Jacques Cousteau and Sea Hunt were the inspirations for them becoming divers. And in fact, that's uh, pretty much my story as well. If it hadn't been for those programs bringing the world of diving to the masses, well, it's really doubtful that the dive industry would be where it is today. But when you consider those programs really only lasted just a few years, you know, there's been no inspiration. There's been very little in the way of new programs that inspire generations of divers. And that's where Jonathan Bird's Blue World comes in. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. See, your, your theme song is way bigger and bolder than mine. <laughs> well, you know, we just we we have a great film score. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's really great. So, talk a little bit about jumping in and and doing a television program like this. Where did the idea for the program come from? You know, it's kind of a a very convoluted path to where we got uh, <laughs> from where we started. Back in early two thousands, I was doing fair amount of assignment work for National Geographic and people like that, and um, I had an idea for a show that I thought would be sort of like Jacques Cousteau meets the Crocodile Hunter. You know, back then, the Crocodile Hunter was big. And uh, I, I had this idea for a host-driven, action-y, adventure-y, science-y underwater show. And, you know, when I was a kid, I was inspired to dive by Jacques Cousteau. I was fascinated by his show. And um, I really loved it. Uh, but I, there, like you just said, there really wasn't anything these days that was similar. So I had the idea, and I pitched it to my wife. I said, what do you think of this? And she said, well, who's going to be the host? And I said, I don't know. we got to find someone who's kind of goofy, kind of fun, knowledgeable, good diver, loves to travel, and will work cheap. And she points and, the finger uh, at you, probably. She sa- and she said, you should be the host then. But I said, "What? but I'm the cameraman. Uh, so we came up with this idea where I became the host who is a cameraman. So it's sort of the stories are told from my perspective as a sort of a roving underwater cinematographer guy. So that's sort of how the idea came about. Well, you know, strangely enough, that's kind of what Jacques Cousteau was because he, he started off doing a lot of camera work himself. And it's it's really weird how... I've ended up with this sort of similar path without really trying to plan it. But I think it's just the way things fall in. You start out as uh, you get certified to dive. You're uh, you're blown away by the underwater world. You want to share it with people. You start doing underwater photography or maybe underwater video, whatever you turns your needle, and you start sharing it. Uh, and then that becomes your passion is, is documenting what you see and sharing it with other people. Uh, and then you just sort of naturally follow the same path. You end up going from cameraman to being, I don't know, an entertainer. I, I don't know, you know, the host. <laughs> Well, and, and you do it well because you have that energy behind you. I've sat and watched a number of the webisodes online, and you, you do have that energy and that enthusiasm, which is necessary. You know, Jacques Cousteau was always kind of this, uh, you know, you know I'm, I'm swimming now with the uh, sea lions, and, you know, I don't do a French accent very well, but, you know, but well, you, there was a captivation yeah, there. He was a little more subdued than we are. We're a, little, we're a little bit more of a spaz, I think. So tell me what got you interested in diving in the first place. So, you know, it's funny, when I went to college, I used to complain about the fact that you're paying a lot of money for a higher education, and yet they still make you take gym. Uh, but as it turns out, my phys ed requirement in college is the reason that I got certified to dive. When I, you know, when I was a kid, I watched Jacques Cousteau. And to me, scuba divers were like, they were like astronauts. I mean, they were, they were like superheroes, like normal people couldn't scuba dive. That was like, that was Jacques Cousteau did that. You know, I never even considered the idea that I could grow up and be a diver or even these days be a diver and be a kid never occurred to me. And when I got to college uh, and I found out I could actually take that for a gym class, I was like, Whoa, that sounds cool. (laughs) So I took scuba diving for a semester with Naui, I might add. And uh, my instructor was Jerry Kumo, who's kind of famous here in New England. Um, and uh, he was a great instructor. And I did my first open water dives. And I can still remember to this day, the moment when I looked at that lobster staring me back in March, <laughs> in 36 degree water off Cape Ann, Massachusetts, and realizing that I had just discovered my passion in my life. And I had just done four years of engineering school. So <laughs> nice. nice. Oh, well, so talk a little bit about what do you really hope to bring to people when you bring an episode, you know, online? What are you hoping to accomplish with that episode? The thing about being a filmmaker and 
being a filmmaker is about telling stories. A lot of people like to call themselves filmmakers when, in fact, they don't make films. They shoot video, but they never edit anything out of it. Um, <laughs> when you try to go shoot some video and then turn it into something you want other people to watch, you really need to engage them. So you need to tell a story. And telling a story is more important than your video being great. I mean, not to say you don't, you want to shoot great shots. You want your shots to be good, but you can't just have the money shot. You've got to have all the shots to tell a story. What I really want to do with every episode of Blue World is I want to teach the audience something really cool about the ocean, but I want to do it in a way that's really engaging and fun, like they felt that they just had an adventure. I never want my audience to feel like they had a lecture. Uh, they're sitting in class. They're being told something. I want them to be watching this and being like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then at the end, they go, oh, yeah, and I learned a couple things, too. So... We try to avoid all preachiness, uh, make the show sciency, but in disguise, science in disguise. Nice. You don't know, you don't know you're getting science. Don't know that you're <laughs> learning things. <laughs> exactly. I found it online. I found it under uh, your website and you can watch some little episodes. Now, is it on broadcast television or cable, that kind of thing as well? It's a long convoluted thing. We started out, we made a pilot for television. We sent it to all the regular players back in the mid-2000s, and Discovery Channel said, this is way too educational for us. Um, we couldn't find anyone that was interested in the show based on the pilot. So right around that time, I got a contract to do uh, a film about pelagic sharks for National Geographic Channel. So I kind of put the Blue World idea on the shelf for two years and went off around the world filming sharks with someone else's money. While I was there... Uh, I decided to shoot some Blue World segments at each location. And I had negotiated the contract with National Geographic such that I owned the stock footage rights to all the footage. They owned the finished film, but not the footage. So I could use that footage again for other things, and I wanted to make Blue World. So when that contract was done and the film was delivered, I said, you know, I'm just going to start editing these segments and put them on the web. And I started putting them on YouTube. And what's funny is this is in 2007. YouTube just looked terrible. The quality was awful. So we said, you know, YouTube stinks. Let's make quick times that are a little bit better than their quality. We'll put them up on our own website and we'll try to build an audience. Now, I don't know if you remember in 2007, they had the writer's strike in Hollywood. Oh, yes. So there was nothing on television. And PCMagazine.com did an article, the 10 best shows to watch on the web during the writer's strike. And Blue World was on that list. And we got a lot of traffic and I got a call from a syndicator for public television. And they said, hey, why isn't this on television? We want you to be on public television. <laughs> funny, you asked, so said, funny you asked that question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but we didn't, you know, we had made a bunch of segments, which were all around nine minutes. And the show is designed to be magazine style. So you've got these like nine minute segments. And when you put three of them together, you've got a 27 minute show for public television, a half hour magazine style. And by doing it that way, you have different subjects in each half hour. Like if you're not into shipwrecks, the next segment's going to be sharks, you know? So we, we mix it up. We ended up on public television and we did four seasons and every season, the way public television works, you have to get sponsors to give you money to make the show. And then you put their name on the show. And for a couple of seasons, we, we did get some funding from the National Science Foundation and we got the majority of our funding from the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. But we weren't really able to find the kind of sponsorship that really is going to keep you in business. It didn't seem sustainable. So in 2012, we actually, after learning a lot about the market and, and the demographics of who watches our show, we made the kind of crazy decision to go back to YouTube so while we had started on YouTube in 2007, we hadn't put anything up since 2007. And in 2012, we got serious about YouTube. And we started putting all of our stuff on YouTube. And we started making it a regular show on YouTube in the segment format, not in the half hour format. So each story, this nine minutes, whatever, would be posted as a standalone episode. And uh, we actually are just finishing our fifth season. We're putting it all, it's all been put on YouTube. You can watch it in HD on YouTube. And we have a distributor that is going to package it up with us and release it to probably to cable. Um, but we, we're not quite sure on that one yet. It might go to public television if we can get enough sponsorship. But it's strange. We started on the web, we went to television, and we've come full circle back to the web. Um, that's how. Younger people watch video these days. Nobody mm -hmm. watches television. Right. We're, 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 our YouTube channel is growing incredibly fast. Um, and we're actually looking at a point where YouTube is a, a sustainable business model for us. So, um, it's weird. I guess we're a web show now. I, I don't know. Um, we were nominated two years in a row now for National Daytime Emmy Awards as a web show. 
So the world is a changing. Well, if you haven't checked it out, be sure and do so. It's called Jonathan Bird's Blue World, and you find it at blueworldtv.com, or you can just watch it on YouTube. It's lots of fun. We do sharks, wrecks, cave diving. Um, it's an underwater themed show that's very sciencey, but it's um, completely. Um, it is. I would like to clear something up. It is not a children's show. It is not written for kids, but it is completely family friendly. Um, nice. You will never find anything that is inappropriate for a six-year-old on the show. Jonathan, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Greg. That's this episode of Nowey's Dive Team Report. I'm Greg Martin. Thanks for listening. I'll see you underwater.